One of the most important tasks of a DBA is to be aware and to know what is happening on our servers and our databases. And this is just as true in the cloud as it is with our on-premises servers. Now Azure SQL Database offers two features which can help us with this. The first is called alert rules where we can create rules that will cause an email to be sent to an administrator when the rule has been breached. And the second is the ability to create graphs of important metrics displayed in a dashboard so we can watch for trends and anomalies on our system. So let's go over to Azure and take a look. So here is my dashboard in the portal for all my SQL Azure databases. And I'm going to use the AdventureWorks 2012 database for this demonstration. So if we open this up and if we scroll towards the bottom under monitoring, we have this option called alert rules. So let me click on alert rules. And I already have several alert rules created. So I have an alert rule called hacking attempt. So if anyone tries to come through the firewall from an IP address that isn't configured, then I will get an alert. I've also got a login error. So if anyone logs in unsuccessfully, then I will also get alert. And more importantly, if my CPU goes over 60%, I will also receive an alert. So how do we do this? Click on add alert, and this will open up the alert screen. So I've got my resource chosen, which is my AdventureWorks database. So I need to give this a rule name. So let's call it alert1. We can give it a description if we wish. And then we can choose what metric we wish to monitor. And there's a whole host of metrics here from blocked by firewall, failed connections, successful connections. Maybe you want to see if you're having too many people logging in. Maybe it's just too busy. You can look at the CPU percentage, report on deadlocks, DTU percentage is probably better than CPU, as well as the uh, data I.O., um, the number of sessions that are running, whether the database is getting near the maximum size for the particular pricing tier you're on, um, and all sorts of things. So if we tick, select something fairly straightforward, such as DTU percentage, we then choose what condition we're after. So we can have is the DTU greater than, greater than or equal, less than or less than or equal? We're going to choose greater than, and I'm going to say if it's greater than 60%. But you may want, for instance, less than. You may want to know whether this server is constantly running below a certain value. And then you might find that you could actually reduce the performance level and save money. But we're going to stick with threshold greater than 60%. We can then choose how long do we want to wait for that to happen. Is it over 5 minutes, 45 minutes, or the last hour? So I'm going to say 10 minutes, and then we can choose who to email. So we can email the owners, contributors, and readers of this system. We could enter additional email addresses, or if we like, we could even enter it as a webhook and then use an automation account or some other automation process to pick up that webhook and do something else. So for instance, if the database is constantly running at 95% DTU, we could have a webhook which calls an automation process which pushes the server automatically up to the next level. So once we've decided on our values, click OK. And that will create our alert rule for us. And that will be running straight away and will alert us if it ever happens. One interesting caveat is with the login error. All these alert rules run on a particular database, not on an Azure SQL Server. So the login error will only be activated if the connection is to that database. If the connection string in Management Studio, for instance, is listing the master database as the default, then you will never receive an alert because the alert is on the AdventureWorks database. So that is definitely something worth watching out for if you're unsure why you're not receiving the errors that you think you should be. Now we set up alerts. 
we want to create a dashboard. Now, one of the nice things with Microsoft Azure and this portal is the ability to create as many dashboards as we like. Now, I've already created a dashboard here called AdventureWorks 2012, and this has lots of nice graphs for us to see how our performance of our server is going. Now, unfortunately, because this is a demo database, there isn't much activity, but hopefully this still gives you an idea of what you can do. So you can see I have graphs for failed and successful connections, CPU and DTU percentage, I.O., and the block by firewall in the last week. Down here I can see what alerts have been enabled and which have activated recently, and I can see that my database is online. To create this type of dashboard is very simple. You can click on New Dashboard and start filling it in. I'm going to click on Edit This Dashboard and I'll show you how to configure your dashboard. So we can give it a name in this box and then we can choose from a whole series of tiles to place on our dashboard. So if I come down and select Type and then select Azure SQL or SQL Database which is down the bottom we now have a whole series of graphs which we can then drag onto our screen. So let me take an example of database connections. Let's drag it and place it there. I can then choose what type of graph I want to display. So I can choose from a line type or a bar graph. I can choose from the past hour, today, the past week, or a customized time. And then I can choose what I want to display. So in this case, I've got failed and successful connections. But I could add block by firewall and other values as well. Click OK. And that's it now configured. Similarly, we can do other, we can drag other resources on here. So resource utilization storage, size, and various other graphs, which you can then configure as you can see. If we wish to change the size of our, our tile, simply click on the customized menu here and we can choose a different size. So maybe I would like it much larger for this one. We can then rearrange them to suit. So maybe I want to pull that one over here into that square. Once we have exactly as we want, click Done Customizing. And there we have our graph displaying our data. One nice feature which has appeared recently in an update to the Azure portal is the ability to share our dashboards. If we click on Share, we can actually choose to share it with different Azure resource groups so that other people who may not have access to Azure SQL databases can see what is happening in that database and monitor the trends and anomalies that are going on. I hope that has been a useful introduction to how to monitor and create alerts in your Azure SQL database. There are more videos on my YouTube channel if you wish to discover more about Azure and other SQL Server features. And also you can download my free ebook from gethinellis.com and I hope to see you later.